is 16 minutes after 7 o'clock and joining us in studio this morning from the New Mexico Military Institute. I just got to say Coach Joe Fortner because that's the only – I mean, I, Coach is like president. Once you're there, you just get called that the rest of your life, whether you're a coach or not. So, hey. Coach Joe Fortner joining us here this morning from the uh, me. How you doing today, Coach? I'm great, man. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, anytime. Love uh, having talking to you and love getting you on. So, so, uh, so for to clear things up because I joked earlier, I was like, I think his job officially is trophy wipe now. Because for those that don't know, his 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 lovely wife has been been uh, leading the, the 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 volleyball team to uh, some pretty mm-hmm. great seasons over the years here. So. Um, I, you know, when we had, uh, at one point you had coach here on the football field, his wife, uh, taking things down in the armory there. So, yeah. uh, so uh, now, now you get to, you do do other things, but you get to spend more time rooting on your wife now and cheering for the volleyball team. For so. sure. Yeah. I got to go to nationals twice. She actually, you know, you guys were joking. I was sitting out there laughing because she got me a coffee mug that says trophy husband. Oh, on it. Did yeah, she? she did. <laughs> so I hit close to home on that one. Right, right. <laughs> That's pretty good. But, uh, so, um, we got, uh, of course, um, we got a bowl game this Friday here. The, uh, New Mexico military Institute Broncos mm-hmm. are going to be, uh, hosting, I guess you can kind of say, I mean, technically they're invited, but kind of hosting the, the wool bowl here. And they're going to be taking on, uh, Lackawanna college. They're out of Pennsylvania, I believe. Right. And, uh, it's going to be a fun game here, uh, Friday. So we, what we, what the big thing we want to do is we'd love to invite everyone to come on out to the wool bowl and let's, let's fill the stadium with, uh. Hopefully a bunch of Broncos fans, but just football fans, really, you know, just come out and see the game. Yeah, I'm excited. I hope we get a huge crowd. I mean, we've got two teams. We couldn't have more evenly matched teams in this thing. We've got number nine team in the nation and in NMMI and then mm-hmm. the number 11 team in Lackawanna coming down from, you know, Scranton, Pennsylvania. So I think it's going to be a good game. The atmosphere is going to be great. We've got a lot of special things going on to make it more than just a regular season game. Yeah. So. Yeah, I know. Um, I know. There's a lot. Uh, basically, uh, for folks that don't know, uh, we're we're kind of being Roswell. The community has been serving as an ambassador for this thing, and I know a lot of entities around town have been putting together things and events to kind of welcome the football. Well, obviously, a lot of the NMMI players they, they're pretty familiar. They're they, you know they live here for mm-hmm. you know even though most a lot of them aren't from here, they do live here. But uh, the from the all the players and, and staff and everything from Lackawanna, we come and give a nice welcome and show them some uh, New Mexico Roswell hospitality here. So right. a lot of folks have been really good about doing that kind of stuff. And what when do they all get into town, or are they in town already, or are they be coming in today or tomorrow? Or they something? get in Wednesday. Wednesday, so, yeah. So Lackawanna's tomorrow. coming in Wednesday, and they've got a practice a practice on Thursday. We've got a banquet on Thursday, and then Friday we're we're going. Good so, deal. Yeah. How does it work on the coaching side? Do y'all, I mean, is it, I know like in high school with film exchange, all is college pretty much the same way or mm-hmm. do y'all go to neutral sites to get all that kind of stuff? I was no, of we, it's all, it's the same. I mean, they, you know, agree on, Hey, do you want to trade three games? Do you want to trade every game okay. and whatever they agree on, they do. Now, back when I first started coaching, we would have to drive we would put our VHS tapes in the car and then drive and meet halfway with somebody else on a Sunday morning in exchange. But okay. now it's just, they just click a button and exchange. Good. So. Well, thank goodness. Cause, uh, somewhere between here, halfway between here and Pennsylvania. <laughs> what what is that? Meet like Nebraska. Yeah. <laughs> that's, all, that's a road trip there. Here. So, uh, um, just curious, you know, what's, um, in, in, in Juco is, is, is football styles different East coast with, with I mean, like when you fake, cause you guys don't really face off against a lot of teams from, from that part of the country here. You know, most, mm-hmm. most of the teams you face are Southwest, you know, region of the country. Here. Right. So, um, I imagine a, it's pretty cool to face schools from different parts of the country, but is it different game, you know, in the East versus what, what they do out here? Yeah, it kind of is. I mean, it really depends on, it's, it's really regional okay. because like, if you go down to Florida, especially uh, you see it in the high schools a lot, you can't just go down there and throw the ball a thousand times because it rains so much and you might have, you know, sloppy games and playing in the rain and it just doesn't work. You so need a run game to you win. You do. Yeah, you do. And, and similar in Mississippi. So it, it's kind of regional, but I don't know, you know, we haven't played a team from that region, the Northeast region mm-hmm. in a long time. I think we played the last time we played a Northeast team was when we played Nassau in the Empire State Bowl in okay. 90 something. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I would, um, you know, growing up in Maryland, I'm pretty familiar with Scranton, Pennsylvania. And it's, it's, it's an industrial town. They got a lot of, 
um, you know, industry work and things like it's kind of a working class kind of town. Pretty, you know, you know, I would say Scranton's probably about the size of Las Cruces or something like that. Oh, okay. Maybe, given population wise, it's been a few years since I've been there, but um, it, you know, there's a lot of similarities is kind of that blue collar type mentality, same kind of deal here. Mm-hmm. So I imagine they probably have that same mindset as a college and as a team too. So, and uh, we'll I know see. their coach does. He's yeah. Been, he's been there a long time and he's a hall of fame coach. I think he just got his 200th win. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So, so you're, we're facing a club here. This is, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, we look at, uh, you know, we think at Lackawanna, I've never heard of them, but they're, they're going to bring their A game and mm-hmm. we're going to see a competitive match here. And like you said, it's a, it's a, a nine versus 11, which, you know, anytime you look at playoff brackets and it, even like high school, it doesn't matter what level, but, you know, yeah, it, it's not those one versus 12 matchups that you look at. It's those seven versus eight. Right. And those right there. And this is kind of one of those where it's like, it, 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 at the end of the day, this game is going to lead down who's going to make the, the one extra play or who's going to make the less mistakes or, mm-hmm. you know, who's going to capitalize on the turnovers. Uh, the, when, whoever does those things are going or win the football game on on Friday, here. right? So. And it's this is only it turned out that this was only one of three bowl games in the nation. So, you know, to get two teams that are highly ranked like that, I'm excited. You know, this I think this is Lackawanna's 14th bowl game. So they're oh wow, you know, they're a perennial powerhouse. So this is kind of old hat for them. They're used to <laughs> they're used to going to bowl games, and right? Things. And of you course, know. And MMI, the Broncos do have a target on their back. They are the defending, you know, little bit. national champion. So yep. that does come with a slight target on their back. So uh, I imagine they're they're pretty hyped up. Lackawanna is just as hyped up to play this game as NMMI will be on on Friday here. Yeah, so. I know Coach Kurt. He actually in the off season shirts had targets on all of their backs. <laughs> he actually yeah. had some yeah. made. Yeah. That was on the shirt. Else. And, yep. And uh, yeah, but uh, but you know, I was talking about a little bit about this year's team. You know. Uh, Yes, the, they're not going to the national championship this year, but that's a it's a pretty they pretty good ball club, and they've had a great season. And uh, obviously, going to the bowl game here, so mm-hmm. you know that's proof in the pudding there. But you know, how close is this game? This team from last year's team is it as far as what they do and how they do it? Is it pretty close, or is it a little bit different? It's tough to replace a team like that. Sure, I mean. I knew that that was going to be our best team ever. There was um, a special just chemistry yeah. there that just you can kind of see it when you see it. Yeah, I mean, it was – I think there's 22 starters are gone or 20 starters from that team were gone after the national championship game, you know, going into this year. And so you had good players across the board in support roles, but then you had the really, really high-level players, you know, who like we had the national player of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had a D1 quarterback who's starting just down the road. He was the net college D1 national player of the week last week, Diego Pavia. Yeah. Um, well, and that's the real proof in the pudding there is now you mm-hmm. see next year where all these these kids that were, you know, on that championship team, now they're in Division One schools, they're doing, mm-hmm. you know, you know, they're they're – some of them will be household names maybe in the in, in a few years here, you know? Yeah. Uh, and that's a cool – I imagine that's as a coach, that's a cool feeling. No, it's awesome. But yeah. it's hard to compare a team, any team, to that team because sure. not only was that team very, very special, but they also didn't have any injuries. You know, the stars kind of Luck aligned. Luck was on them. their side. Yeah, and that's bit. what it takes, though. Sure. I mean, that's not a knock. That's a – you know, a special team and the kind of the stars align for them and sure. look what happened. You know, yeah. that's so that that's not the measuring stick, I don't think. I mean, obviously, that's the goal is to win the national championship every year, but that doesn't mean that falling short of that is a failure. Well, um, and that's just it. You know, it's mm-hmm. great, and, and, and you look at between yourself and what Coach Kurt have done with this team over the years, you know, it, it, you've turned this team into a, a perennial good team. You know, every year, whether they go to a championship or they go to a bowl game or don't go to a bowl game. Whoever is going to line up against the the Broncos, they know they're going to have their hands full every single Saturday, you know. And uh, and and to me, that's 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 the mark of a good team right there. When you know, you know, all right, they're you know, we got a game whenever we play this team, and and that's and I could I think it's safe to say you could. You've never seen a, a Bronco football team that wasn't prepared, ready to play football. Well, so. I appreciate that. Coach Kurt's done a heck of a job. He's he's done a heck of a job. Yeah. So. Well, and, yeah. And, 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 of course, you talk to him and he credits you because, you know, you're kind of his mentor and things like that. So well, we can just pass it back and forth. Then. <laughs> <laughs> but he's playing in the bowl game. I'm just running the bowl game. Sure. So. Well, yeah. it's one of those things that it takes everybody in the building to do their part and everything else. Co- Coach Kurt wouldn't be where you're at, where he's at without your help and – and likewise, you know, where you're doing today and what you've gone to players like him when, when you were coaching, mm-hmm. that's what it, 
you know, everyone needs that to, to have success. We all need each other to do that. And that's, that's the team mentality. Right. So, so looking at, at, at the game, uh, talk about a little bit logistics here. So the game will take place 6 p.m. this Friday at the Wool Bowl. For people to get tickets, what's probably the easiest, best way to get tickets for this? There's a couple different ways. Uh, Woolbowl.net. Okay. Uh, you can buy tickets online. Uh, you can also buy them at the gate. So okay. That won't be a problem. I know sometimes with high school, they're like, we got to get the app and download no, this and do all no, this. No, I know that they've they've kind of moved to that high school-wise. We, we can do either way. So okay. you can buy them online ahead of time, or you can pay at the gate. It's $5 for adults. It's uh, free for kids, 14 and under. So, oh, wow. yeah, we try to make it affordable. I well, want a big crowd. Yeah, yeah I'll say, how, how many bowl games can you go to for 5 bucks? One. Yeah, <laughs> you're looking at the Wool Bowl. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be, uh, I mean, uh, like, uh, there's a lot planned. I think uh, you'll be impressed that, you know, all the just the cool stuff that's going to be happening. And, oh, by the way, there's a football game. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we want it to be an event, you know, not just. Not just some, uh, you know, run-of-the-mill things. So. Yeah, talk, just can we tease a little bit of some of the stuff we're doing, or we yeah. want to keep it all under no, the hat it's not. Here? it's definitely not a secret. All right, yeah, yeah, talk a little bit about some of the stuff we got going on. Okay, so we're having uh, 11 food trucks right now are going to be set up uh, just right next to the Wool Bowl, in the okay. Wool Bowl parking lot. Good deal. They're going to be so, set up there. So to come game kickoffs at 6, you won't be there at 5 for some tailgating, or 4.30 yeah. at least to get there and get some eating and tailgating. In. Right, so they're going to set up, I think, by 4, Okay. Um, and then they'll be open, and then we have a military flyover. Uh, it was supposed to be right before the game, but we changed some things around, and there was some stuff with the Pentagon, so the flyover is going to be at 5. Okay. So they're actually going to fly over the pregame and the tailgate, so that's going to be super good cool. Good deal, so you... Get you a good spot to sit down and watch the flyover after you get your food or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you're going to miss it. It's going to fly right over your head. You're going to hear it for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we've got um, we've got like a 30-yard long flag that's going to be out on the field. Lindsey Weathers from Goddard is singing the national anthem. Um, we've got fireworks before the game. Oh, nice. Uh, when teams get announced, we've got a helicopter uh, delivering the game ball, landing on the 50-yard oh, wow. line or right above the 50-yard line. This is like a wrestling. Uh, you know, yeah, like you, the, <laughs> Charlie's Angels are performing at halftime. Entrance music the whole night. All of it. All of it. Yeah. Legacy Dance Academy is performing at halftime. We've got a competition to win a fifty thousand dollar truck at halftime, um, and every free, every paid admission gets an entry into that oh, uh, nice. competition to win that truck. Good so, deal. So yeah. there's another reason if you needed a reason to to come out to the game other mm-hmm. than come and see a cool football game. Yeah, Mike, come out of there winning a brand new truck. So. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> That'd be cool. Good yeah. deal. So yeah, so there's so much going on. So come hungry. And come ready to enjoy just the just the, all the festivities. Come see the the you know all the pageantry and all the fun that's part of it. That's and then you know the uh, cool thing about it too is uh, when these teams are in town and stuff. You know I'm sure there's maybe some opportunities where maybe you get to meet some of the kids and talk to them and get a chance to you know show them a little New Mexico hospitality yeah. and things like that. So yeah, because these kids are going to be. I imagine some of them never been to New Mexico before and don't know any of our, you know. Yeah. So they're going to be getting goodie bags with a lot of green, you know, red and green stuff and all that. To, but, uh, you know, you know, be the ambassadors. That's the kind of thing. We, we're always really good as a community about that when we have yeah. folks coming in. And so hopefully there's some opportunity for that, too, where we get to meet some of the players as, as they're visiting town over the next. I know they're going to be practicing, doing bowl stuff, but mm-hmm. hopefully they get a little time, do a little sightseeing and, you know, exploring and. Yeah. We just be good ambassadors, and you know. So. Well, the Chamber of Commerce got together with all the local businesses. They put together gift bags for those guys that are New Mexico gift yeah, bags. themed stuff. Yeah, and, so. and they did an awesome job. It's going to be cool. Yeah, and I know because uh, I happen to have a finger in that one too. We were talking. I'm like, I was like, you know, you, the more food things you put in there, these are high school or not high school. These are college football <laughs> players. I was like, they, you know, there's not enough food you can't put right. for these that they won't love it. So, you know, <laughs> way the hardest through the stomach of a football player. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, I imagine uh, one of the biggest expenses for traveling a football team is food. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Buffet, Golden Corral. That's one right. Of the sponsors. That's... They're going. So, <laughs> so um, <clears throat> What's been the the kind of the mindset of the team this week? And pra- I mean, I know you're, you're you don't get to see all the practice and stuff, but I'm mm-hmm. sure you're, you know, you know, checking in on Coach Coach Kurt and seeing kind of how things are going. What's kind of been the mindset and stuff of practice and getting ready for this bowl game? I don't, you know, it's it, the timeline for these is always kind of weird because, well, Nimi just had finals last week, 
And so then, they're kind of focusing on studies a little bit more than football. At the yeah, moment. and then yeah. all of a sudden finals are done and there's Thanksgiving break. And then as a coach, you're trying to scramble and get everybody back from Thanksgiving break because you want to practice. You sure. don't want to go to a bowl and get your teeth kicked. Yeah, get the you rust practice. off and get all that turkey out of their system. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I know that they were doing you know some stuff to just kind of get be active more than anything, and then and do some practices and things like that. Sure. And I think they'll probably they have the game plan in. Does a bowl game like the mindset as a team? I mean, you've you you coached a few of these yourself, and is it like you look at playoffs, and you know there that's that next level, so you got a championship feel and. Bowl games have can have that flavor too, but also can have a flavor like an all star or game or something where it's a more of a uh, like a, a scenic vacation experience mm-hmm. for, for some of the players. What you know? What's how do you juggle that during bowl games? Of I mean, NMMI doesn't have it because it's a home kind of a home game for them. But when you're on the road like that, how do you juggle? All right, we got a football game, but at the same time, yes, this is an experience we want you to absorb and see and feel mm-hmm. and be a part of. How do you balance that as a coach, especially, you know, when you're going to travel for a bowl game like this? Yeah, I I think it's going to be similar for the Broncos even here, just Mm -hmm. because this is it's a game that has more exposure than most games. Sure. So you want them to enjoy it and you want them to soak in the experience. Um, But, you know, sometimes what happens is that the guys get too excited and they go out there and they're too hyped up and they try to make every play and they just end up playing you know, like their hair's on fire. And so there's kind of a balance of, hey, this is a big game, but, you know, it's a game. You guys belong here. You sure. deserve to be here. So just relax. You know, it's so it's kind of, they're going to be more excited than normal just because sure. of the magnitude of the game. You know, it's it's the only game, only junior college game on Friday. Um, it's number nine versus number 11. There's not very many teams left playing. So, you know, all eyes are going to be on that. Sure, everyone mm-hmm. in the JUCO world is going to be, you know, watching this game. Right. Well, you know, if they're not at the Wool Bowl, I'm sure they'll be online uh, tuning in, you know, to watch it as yeah. well too, and including recruiters. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know? Oh yeah. I'm sure they're thinking, all right, we're, we're looking to fill up next year's roster here. Yeah. Who the Broncos and Lackawanna got that I want to put on my roster here? Yeah. So, do you remember Lavar Arrington? I have. I do. Slightly His son remember. plays for Lackawanna. Really? Yeah. Well, he's a Penn State guy, and uh, yeah. that's where he came from, and. Uh, you, you probably noticed my uh, my uh, things back. I there. saw it. <laughs> Actually, he he lived in my hometown. Was uh, that right? Where, in Waldorf, Maryland, where I where I, I kind of grew up, went to high school and all that. Um, yeah, he lived not in Waldorf, but nearby. And there was a rib place that was pretty popular. And every once in a while, you pop in. There's Lavar Arrington eating ribs. At the, <laughs> <laughs> at the rib he was place. a good player. Yeah, he was great. And uh, matter of fact, he went into radio after that for a little while. And then he worked for NFL Network for a little bit. And I don't know what he's doing now. Huh. But I think he might be back in the Pennsylvania, Penn State area. But oh, okay. Anyway, well, if it's his son is going to Lackawanna, maybe he's in nearby there. So yeah, good. Deal. Is he a linebacker by chance? Yeah, he's a line. I think I think he's a linebacker slash safety okay. type of kid. Okay, so yeah. not too far from uh, from the tree there as, no. as the, the branches <laughs> go. Pretty cool. Well, has he got his dad's skill set? I was I was talking to some of the Bronco coaches the other day, and they said he was pretty good. Okay, well I hope he has a bad game. Nothing. No. <laughs> Great career, bad game on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, LeVar. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. But uh, we would love to see, you know, we would love to, you know, come fill the Wool Bowl, come out and enjoy a great college football game here. The best of the best, uh, you know, some of the best junior college mm-hmm. football in the country is going to be happening right up the street here on Friday. Yep. Come and enjoy it. Get your tickets. Get them online. Go ahead and go to woolbowl.net and get your tickets. Um, if you space out on that or you're like, I don't know, my Friday's kind of busy, I'm not sure yet, and then you find out it's cleared up, great. Get your tickets at the gate here. But, you know, if you want to save yourself a little bit of headache, go ahead and get them uh, in advance here. That way you can go. And then make sure you're here at like 4.30, 4 o'clock, somewhere around there, for all the tailgating, for all the partying, for the flyovers, for all the festivities, and then uh, get you a good spot a little bit before 6 for kickoff. Uh, at the Wool Bowl here. We will have the game on the radio and and uh, video KSVP TV, but that's more for your out-of-town friends and folks that can't get out to the out to the Wool Bowl here on Friday. So 
We'd love to pack that place yeah. and get get as many. That's for we're we're doing the video for all those scouts and coaches. Yeah, out that's there right. So they can <laughs> you know pick up some of these guys, you know. But uh, for the rest of us, we want to get you out in the wool bowl here. So yes, sir. Yeah, good deal. So what what what's kind of like for you personally? I know you've been planning and doing all the behind the scenes work here, mm-hmm. so you're you're probably most happy when when it's over and it's all done and successful. <laughs> but is there a certain part you're most excited about? I mean, is it the actual game or is it something, some aspects that you're kind of like, oh, this is going to be neat. I can't wait for this. Uh, my wife was asking me that the other day. Pretty, I'm pretty fired up about the fireworks. Pretty cool. fired up about the flyover. Yeah, that's um, going to be cool. Do, do we know what base they're coming from? Uh, I think they're coming out of Portales. It's the Army oh, National from Guard. from Clovis. Okay. Yeah. That area. So they're yeah. probably coming from Cannon. Yeah, that ballpark region there. I'm thinking. Yeah, it's, so. it's coordinated through the Army National Guard. So I'm pretty. Okay. I've been to games with flyovers, not never in a junior college game, and okay. it's, I, I love them. So, so is that, do they fly 16s? Uh, or or uh, you're flying UH 60s? Okay. Oh, helicopters. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Sweet. There's no no jets. Oh, okay. So. Sweet. Yo, those are pretty cool too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good news is you might actually see the flyover. Yeah. The helicopters are you know the, the jets are like Phew, and you're like. They should have fly over. They did. Yeah, if you're not looking. <laughs> my buddy, the game we went to a Chargers game, I think, and he goes, "You better look up because if you don't look up, you'll miss it." And yeah. Sure enough, those things are so fast. Oh yeah, they they zip right through there. So well, yeah. cool. That'll be cool. But yeah, come on out, have some fun, and bring the whole family. Tickets are only five bucks. Mm-hmm. I mean, that uh, you can't even go to a movie for that cheap. You know? Yeah, <laughs> we wanted to make it affordable so we can pack the house. I mean, really, this is part of Roswell's history. This game, um, well, the Wool Bowl, yeah, it's a very historic stadium in and of itself, and everything there. Yeah, so it used to be the longest running bowl game in junior college. Really? Yeah, it ran from sixty six to eighty one. It was the Thanksgiving Day kind of thing around here. Okay, and so it was Nimmy. The host for it all the time? I mean, they always didn't play in it every time, but were they kind of the host school for it? Or they was played it... in it um, out of the 16 years that it ran. I think they probably played in it, just guessing off the top of my head. I have all of it, but I think probably eight, nine, ten times, okay. nine times maybe. Good deal. Something like that. So not always, but – and it was it was huge. It was well, the Sometimes biggest... they go to bigger bowls. <laughs> 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 well, it used to be partnered with a coaching clinic and like Bum Phillips and all those guys oh, yeah. would come here and do all that. So it was a big deal. So, yeah, it was really so probably as much for coaching and football and the game as it was the fans, you know, kind of the lineage of the yeah, of the football history and stuff. So cool. So so is is the plan to do this historically every year again, bring back the the Wool Bowl or is it trying to re reestablish it, I guess you could yeah, say? Yeah, we want to want to bring it here and keep it here. Good deal. Mm-hmm. How was it originally started, Big? Do you know off the top of your head or was it... I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if it was like some wool growers thing or well, MMI was kind of. That's you know. who sponsored it yeah. originally. Um, and then it kind of, I think it went away when New Mexico military dropped football there for a little bit. Okay. So it's been gone for 41 years, the bowl game has. Um, but well, I get people around town say, oh, I remember the wool bowl when I was a kid. We used to go there every year. And now here it is again. Well, so, good. Well, hopefully mm-hmm. now we got new generations that'll be, I remember. And so it's the first of many. So right. we'll call it. Uh, Relive, rehash the tradition here, and bring out the wool bowl, and come and and uh, and and then of course uh, come out and enjoy the, the football part too. We keep talking about the flyovers and everything. It's going to be a good football game. These are two very good teams, mm-hmm. and you're going to see an excellent football game. And uh, we can come on and root the the Broncos. Of course, they're you know. There might be some Pennsylvania natives around here that might want to come and root for lack of. They might be like, "Oh, I grew up in Scranton. I want to root for." Okay, come on down. <laughs> it's good football, though. For anyone who hasn't been and watched a junior college, a high level junior college football game, it is good football. Oh, it's great. So it's it is so exciting. I love going and watching the uh, Bronco games. It's just uh, now, obviously, the rules are slightly different in high school. So if you're if you you know it, this is college rules, so mm-hmm. think of Saturdays, not Friday nights. So some of the rules that they use in high school football don't apply here, yeah. and, and things, and vice versa too. So. It's the only New Mexico team in a bowl game, though. That's I true. Think. That's so. true. I didn't think about that till you said it. Yeah. So, uh, and even uh, with New Mexico State doing pretty good this year, you know, it was for New Mexico State. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make that. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, they're not teams that currently win, and you're like, hey, they won some games this year. That's good yeah. for them. So. I don't know if they got invited. I think they went five and six. Something like that. Yeah. But uh, they had a pretty good year for, for, for New Mexico State. Though. Yeah. So, do I, I know that's a different level, but 
like would ever would there ever be a scenario where where a team like Nimi would play a team like that in a no sc- a scrimmage game or something no. like that? I mean, they're Division One versus Division Two. It's a whole different yeah. class here. But I didn't know with just. It's like, oh, summer camp. Yeah, let's put some no. Broncos against Maggies here and see what happens. They've got about eight former Broncos on that team, though. Do they? Yeah. Well, part. that's what they, you're a farm system for them, really. I think them and, 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 you know, obviously the closer the schools, the more scouts they send to look at you. So Sometimes. Yeah. It's not always the case. <laughs> some schools, we don't get anybody to yeah. get down here looking at our guys. But well, That's unfortunate. Yeah, that's the way it goes. They're lost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're going to lack good players uh, from this team. That's all there mm-hmm. is to it. But. But, uh, again, this Friday, 6 p.m. kickoff, uh, December 2nd, is the Wool Bowl. The re, re-brought back, uh, the rehashed or re, uh, rebirthed Wool Bowl. Uh, it's going to be this Friday night. The number 9 NMMI Broncos will take on the number 11 Lackawanna Falcons from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's a close matchup, two pretty... You look at them on paper, they're, they line up pretty uh, evenly here, so it's going to be a good football. <clears throat> um, just from tape and stuff, that uh, I know Coach Kurt's been watching that more than you have here, but but uh, do you think they're going to ground and pound on you a little bit, or do you think they're going to try to air it out? Or I don't know. I haven't watched a whole lot of tape. I know that okay. they changed a little bit um, in the last couple of weeks. So I don't, I don't know. We'll okay. see. We'll see how they how they think they match up. Sure. Well, and, and let's face it, good football teams do a little bit of everything. You know, it's like there's got to, you know if if teams that are really successful, you know they they got it. They kind of have to play. You know, I always play to your. And as a coach, you look at this and you play to your talents of your team and mm-hmm. things. But but at the same token, if you need to slow down the clock or something, you you got to have a running game to do that. And if you want to pick up the pace because you got to play from behind. You're gonna need uh, an air attack here, so right. you know if you 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 rely heavy on one or the other, um, sure that might get you some success. But when you get in trouble, it, it's hard to bail out of those scenarios when you when you're a one trick pony. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> so and uh, so it'll be a great game. What so um, uh, I would recommend getting the uh, to the wool ball probably about four o'clock on Friday. That way you can uh, come hungry and enjoy the food trucks. Don't miss the flyover at 5 p.m. And, of course, uh, come and meet people and talk and hang out. And uh, who knows? Maybe there'll be a few Lackawanna faithful that came all the way out from Pennsylvania setting up a little grill and hanging out out there. That would be really cool. It would be cool if they brought a few a bus of people out here. I think come. it would be cool. Yeah, hopefully. We'll, we'll see. We'll get them a nice spot out in the, uh, there, a good section for them to cheer for That's their right. team and, uh, <laughs> you know, and do all that. And So are they going to have, like, a, is the NMMI band and everything going to be part of the, the – the... No. Okay, no. just just football people. They're all gone. The, the, are they all uh, – All the cadets are gone. Oh, oh, that's right. I guess the hot for uh, – for uh, when do they come back from holidays? Not till January. Oh wow! Yeah, this is uh, we stopped. We gave our, all the finals right before Thanksgiving okay. this year. This is a big break for them. Big I didn't, break. I didn't realize you guys uh, was that a new thing, or you always uh, do it that th- way? Yeah, we did it during COVID. Okay, um, so people didn't have to travel and then come back. Sure, and then that was always kind of an issue. We have so many kids from so far away. Yeah, you know, international across That's the country. True. So they would travel home for Thanksgiving. Then have to come back for you know two weeks and then, and go, then back go right to, back again. That makes sense, yeah. Because so. yeah, I mean, so really much the football teams on, on campus right now. Mm-hmm. That's about it. And but yeah, if you ever look at like, well, just look at the the Bronco roster, and that'll give you kind of a small sample of that. If you look at the players, I mean, yeah, there's a few from New Mexico, but there's a lot of different states, different countries that mm-hmm. are on that roster here. Yeah, and uh, and, and that's really cool because it uh, imagine makes a fun challenge for you as coaches and things, but, but you know, it, it, it also creates some logistics when it's time for getting everybody home yeah. again and things like that. Yeah. So, well, good deal. But uh, again, this Friday, again, get your tickets, net. Tickets are only $5 a piece. Uh, you can also get tickets at the gate on Friday, but uh, do yourself a favor and just get them in advance here. That way you can guarantee uh, you'll, you get them and then you don't have to worry about it later on. So, uh, and then uh, come on out and enjoy football. Come out some fun. Bring uh, and the good news is I think weather wise uh, Friday's going to be pretty warm. It's going to be in the seventies and and should be a good uh, evening for some football. I think people 
uh, be quite comfortable sitting out in the wool bowl. Should, the weather shouldn't be a problem. Hope, so. hope. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. Coach, is there anything we wanted to mention or anything we wanted to share or we just skipped or didn't get a chance to talk about? I think you covered it all. You're a pro. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pro because I'm dumb enough to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> hey. That's what it is. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> well, Coach, uh, can't wait for Friday. Uh, tell uh, Coach Kurt and the team we're, we're rooting on them and good luck to them. And, and uh, we're, we're uh, hoping for a, a home Wool Bowl victory here on Friday. I'll definitely so, tell them. Good deal. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate, Appreciate you. It. Don't go stomp out 37 other fires here that you got. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Sorry, just can't be a trophy husband this week. He's got work to do. <laughs> You just can't sit look pretty. I hope my wife's listening. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. It is 747. Let's pause for news.